to turn to and talk about a story. This is actually rather interesting uh, and um, great thing I got to do over the weekend. Um, our um, I am, was part of bringing a um, an event to Dallas over the weekend. On Saturday, we, there was a lovely event uh, involving the guy who many of you know by the name Bo Snurdly. Bo Snurdly was actually in um, Dallas to talk about uh, a new pack that he has created called the New Journey Pack. It's Bo Snurdly and the CEO is a younger man named um, Autry Pruitt. The two of them came to Dallas to talk about the New Journey Pack. And if you're thinking, I know this name, Bo Snurdly, where is that from? Bo Snurdly is kind of the stage name for a man whose name is actually James Golden. He is the Rush Limbaugh call screener, producer, I think executive director, kind of, you know, all hands on deck kind of guy. Bo Snurdly has worked, he is a, a black man. He's a tall, big, gregarious, outgoing, tender, gentle, great guy. And Bo Snurdly has been with Rush Limbaugh as his kind of off-air occasional sidekick for decades close with Rush Limbaugh, very much a conservative, very much a Donald Trump supporter. And I had the opportunity at this event that we hosted over the weekend to interview Bo Snurdly as well as Autry Pruitt. I'm going to play this interview for you. I record it, you know, in a, um, it's just audio, but I'll be ha showing you some pictures of the event. There's uh, Bo Snurdly is in a blue suit. Uh, Autry Pruitt is a, is a shorter guy, and he's not in a blue suit. Now, my husband was there also, so there's some pictures with him, too. But I'm going to have those pictures slide as I let you listen to what Bo Snurdly had to say. This was a profound thing. What we talked about many, many points. I'll tell you more after you listen to the video. But this is a guy... Bo Snurdly, who is going to stand up starting now to say the black community in America deserves better than the way the Democrat Party has treated black America. This is a guy working to bring the message of the GOP of conservatism, of Americanism to the inner city in America, to the black community in America. His PAC, the New Journey PAC, is, de is designed to fund black conservative candidates running for Congress but more importantly, more largely, to make a sustained long-term effort to bring the message of conservatism and the GOP to the black community in America. So here you have it. I'm interviewing Bo Snurdly and Autry Pruitt this, this two days ago, this past Saturday. So I had the great pleasure over the weekend of having a conversation with two people who are leading a new pack called the New Journey Pack. It is James Golden and Autry Pruitt, you may know the name James Golden or think it sounds familiar, and that's because his stage name or name you hear him uh, addressed by on the Rush Limbaugh show is Bo Snurdly. Well, they were in Dallas, had the great chance to interview them and talk about the pack that they have created. So first, let them say hello. Hello, James. And how are you? I am well, and I'm glad you're here. Hello, Autry. Thank you so much for having us. Hello. So glad you're here. So let's just start with New Journey Pack. I want to have both of you talk about how it got started, who thought of it, and, and what is the idea of it? What's your mission in the New Journey Pack? We'll start with Bo Snurdly, a.k.a. James Golden. Well, earlier on uh, last year, I began to think about what was coming up in 2020 with the election cycle. So I decided that after 30 years behind the scenes, it was time to actually become more of an, take a more of an activist role because I was concerned with where the country was going. And I knew, and we all knew, that the racial attacks that the Democrats were using were just going to go hyper um, in the election season. I thought the easiest way that we could uh, enter and have a make a difference would be with a political action committee. So I spoke with a few friends, and they recommended a brilliant young man to lead it up. He's sitting in the room, Audrey Pruitt, and we have a, a, a mission. We want to see the president reelected. This president has done amazing things, and they've benefited the entire country. They've particularly benefited African-American communities, minority communities, when the previous administration said it was impossible. And we also want to see more black conservatives elected. And I think if there's been a surprise, it's been the number of people that have approached us that are running all across the country in races. We want to see conservatives of all stripes elected, and we are supporting conservatives of all stripes. 
we are even going to support people who are mostly conservative. Because as Ronald Reagan said, it's better to get most of the loaf than none at all. And one of the things that we're doing, uh, we're in for the long haul. We're not going to go dark after the election season's over. Our long-term goal is to have New Journey offices in every blue city in America because we are going to fight the narrative. The Democrats have been running a 50-year nonstop narrative, defining Republicans as evil, defining Republicans as bigoted against them. And these attacks have either gone largely unanswered or have not been answered strenuously enough. And we're going to pick up the mantle, and it is not going to happen overnight, but we are going to change that narrative. Thank you so much. That was just a great, great answer. I'm going to turn now to Autry Pruitt and ask, so there have been people talking about the idea that conservative ideas actually are better for everyone for 50 or 60 years. We have Larry Elder, fabulous American advocate for conservative ideas and trying to bring the message to the African-American community. And Walter Williams, brilliant economist, Thomas Sowell, all those people have been talking about this for uh, decades. And especially now, people argue that America is more divided than ever. So given that background, what do you think is the difference or how why do you think New Journey can do something now that that really has been a struggle for the last several decades? Well, I feel that uh, t- two things, two things. I first feel that the reason why New Journey can do something now is because New Journey understands something that the left has understood from the beginning. It's about the human story. I love the three wise men. I love Larry Elder. I love Dr. Thomas. I, l- I love them all. But we need to understand the human condition and be able to tell that story because conservatism has a story. The fact that the left for decades have uh, exploited African-American communities in terms of abortion, killing babies, uh, in terms of not allowing job expansion, in terms of raising taxes so small businesses can't even start up, in terms of having regulation that's such a burden that an African-American male or female coming up can't start their own business. We need to tell that story, the story of the young man who wanted to start his own business but couldn't because of the layers of bureaucracy to get that business off the ground. If we start to reframe and get out of the charts and the graphs and start talking about the stories that the, about how the left has actually destroyed individual lives with their policies, that's going to make the difference. And frankly, with James and I both being black Americans, we come from that community and can tell those stories. And we know hundreds of people, some are not even conservatives, quote unquote, brand name conservatives, Republicans, but they have stories to share. So what we're doing is we are taking the everyday stories of African-Americans in battleground states right now, but all across the country in states that we need to preserve and keep red, such as Texas, we're taking those stories and putting them in front of people. And then the second part of that is we're also going to attack and go after the Democrat brand. We're going to talk about the reality of the brand. Now, not in a way such as Dinesh D'Souza does, which we know, we love him to death. He's been such a great friend to us. But we're going to attack the Democrat band by telling the stories in 60 minutes, 60 seconds, 30 seconds, two minutes, three minutes, et cetera. And if we can begin to do that and do it consistently, both in cycle and out of cycle, we can begin to peel back some of the Democrats' I would say, stronghold within the black vote. Go ahead, tell me that, please. We are looking now at, at four generations of black conservatives. We, Archery James, Larry Elder, and many of our generation, we are standing on the shoulders of Dr. Williams and Dr. Scholl, Dr. Sowell and Shelby Steele. Those are the, we call them the three wise men. They have, they have, given us the intellectual underpinnings to explain conservatism. And also, they have taught us, many of the black conservatives in our generation, what it was like in their generation. And even though they faced hardships 
from the state, from state-sponsored oppression, there was a lot of progress that was happening that ceased when the Great Society came about. So you have that generation. You have Autry in our generation. You have, slightly younger than me, guys like Kevin Jackson. And Autry would be in that generation, <laughs> by the way, with Kevin. And now we have people like Candace Owen. And she's reaching out to even younger. You have four generations of black conservatives. And what is different this time? We're not just isolated. I will tell you that many of us are working together. This is not, we're not crabs in a barrel each trying to just compete with each other. We're working together. We've had people that have done other PACs that haven't gotten as much attention as ours have that have come on board and said, hey, we can help you and you can help us. And we're doing that. People have been just marvelous. And so I think you're seeing a, this is the beginning of a, this is not the beginning. We are in a movement and that movement is going to continue to grow. Just love both those answers. I love you mentioned a moment ago, James. I, I, okay, the name Bo Snurdly is so much fun. Just but, go with Bo. <laughs> okay. <It's cool. laughs> well, the idea of placing offices in inner cities is a brilliant idea. Last night at a meeting, we were discussing the idea how Texas really manages to remain conservative because of the urban and, I mean, the rural vote, the rural, the outlying, but you get into the cities and the tech, even Texas, people think it's such a conservative place. Texas has a problem getting a conservative vote to come out of the inner city. So what are you going to do in those inner city Let me offices? Tell you why this is so important. Last night I was in the hood. Okay. I'm, I'm a vegetarian. I'm a vegan or vegetarian. Whatever. Okay. I wanted to find some vegan food. The place that I found was a place in the hood called Da Munchies. Okay, they do great vegan food. Now, I also had discussions with the business owner. We were able to talk about what we would call in the conservative world, capital formation. <laughs> what I was talking, hey, you, you gotta get some money because you, you're gonna need to expand because your food is so great, this just can't be contained here. Now, I guarantee you that this spot, Autry saw it because he came to pick me up from there. This spot is not a spot that most people listening to this podcast would ever go to. The place in the neighborhood, it looks a little sketchy. But you know what? This is why New Journey has to be there. This is why we have to be in every single blue city in America. When I grew up in Queens, New York, the Republican Party was there. They had an office on Farmers Boulevard. The Republican Party left by the time I had graduated from high school. They were long gone and never to return again until they're making an emergence because we have a black Republican woman running against AOC. AOC represents part of the district that I grew up in. OK, so we have to be in the neighborhoods. We have to demonstrate to people who we are. And we are your neighbors. We are your countrymen. We want what is best for you. We, because we are you. We are one people. We are Americans. And this American dream is ours. And everybody, every single American has a birthright to access this American dream. And that's why we are going in every city in America to let people know who we are and what we're about. I'm so excited I can hardly stand it. I want to tell our listeners, first of all, if you'd like to support the New Journey Pack, you can go to their website, newjourney. Newjourneypack.org. New Journey. Or you can do simple. You can just go to maga.black. M-A-G-A dot black. You don't need a dot com. You don't need net. Just maga.black. Black. And you can reach us there. That is great to know. And I, I honestly, the idea of energizing the messaging to the black community in America, across this country, about what policies really work, is a fabulous idea. I will tell you one quick thing and, and get your reaction to it. But we were talking, we have um, very close friends, long time, they're a black couple, their kids went to school with our kids, long time friends. And they were telling us, we have dinner with them once in a while, and they were telling us how Still, when they go home for Thanksgiving dinner, to, they weren't from here, or they go for a holiday meal, they sit there and they are the only ones who are Republican, and they find it so hard to talk about politics, they just don't. They, they 
agree it's off the table. But I think part of what would be so healthy in America is to have more people willing to talk about why they're driven, people of all races and ethnicities and backgrounds, what drives their, their political thinking, what drives their vote. Because in part, the, the, I see the rabidness of the leftism, the political correctness, it silences political conversation. And what you guys are doing could really inspire young people and the black community inner cities to say, yeah, not just am I going to listen to you. I want to talk more about it. I want to understand. I, I love forcing the conversation about why people vote the way they do and what really has helped or not helped in the black community in America. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I agree. There's two, there's two aspects. Number one, um, being able to interact and talk to individuals and listen. One of the, a lot of times we as conservatives, we tend to be very logical, very uh, graph and stats oriented. And what people need Rather, it's a marriage, a boyfriend, a girlfriend. Sometimes what people need is for you to just listen to them and hear and digest what they're saying. And so we as conservatives, small c, not an organization, not a party, just those who have a conservative viewpoint, if we took more time to listen, we would understand that within the black community, conservatism is there. So this is in some ways, a branding issue. And then the second point is, I used to uh, be involved in talking to people about Christ. And I'd go knock on some doors. I know, you know, I know Democrats would probably shoot me for this, but I actually used to proselytize about Mm -hmm. uh, the kingdom of God. And then I figured out something when I had stopped, I had stopped doing that, I went off to school, and I was just living my life. And I had a couple people come to me and say, man, yeah, you get upset every now and then, but you like people, you love people, why is that? And what I found out was, instead of me talking about Christ, if I just lived my life and interacted with people who normally were outside the circle of who I would interact with, people came to me. And I found the same thing with being a conservative. A lot of people, once I left the real estate world, and did politics were surprised I was a problem. They're like, wait, you're so friendly. You're so nice. You're a Republican. (laughs) And and that's, that's what it takes. That's a part of James's vision and what I'm executing, putting these centers in blue cities. We just need to be there because we're human too. We cry, we scream, we take a shower, we use the restroom. And so if we can interact on that level first, then the message is easy. The message is easy, but right now we're coming down from the the kingdom preaching at people rather than interacting with people. May I just add one thing to that, please? And the conversation that we're looking for is two-way because we also have to have conversations with some of our fellow conservatives. One of the things that I find most troubling when I talk to my fellow conservatives, whom I love dearly sometimes, is sometimes I get a knee-jerk reaction to things. So you'll have, for instance, a shooting, an officer-involved shooting, and minds are made up before even the facts are. Now, we say minds are made up on the left, and they are very often, but often minds are made up on the right, too. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, this is an important issue because this resonates so deeply. I'll tell you why this resonates with me. It resonates with me because of Thomas Shea. Anybody know who he is? I know. When I was a young man, Living in Queens, Thomas Shea was an officer that shot a five-year-old black boy, Clifford Glover, and killed him. And Thomas Shea later said that Clifford Glover, five years old, had a gun drawn on him. If he could even hold a gun, which was impossible, there was no gun. Thomas Shea walked, never did a day of prison time for this. A short time later, another police officer killed a woman not too far from my house by stabbing her to death and went to a psychiatric ward for less than a year, was released, and that was the end of it. I remember these things from my childhood. People remember incidents that happened to them that they are afraid for their own children's lives in their own neighborhoods. The idea of capital punishment in America, which I support, is that there is due process, that there is a system of laws that we respect. And so 
do black people have a responsibility to teach their children morally correct, to be morally correct, not to be involved in criminal behavior that increases their chances of interaction with the law? Absolutely. Do we support um, where black youth especially have a an, an almost arrogant anti-authoritarian view as part of the culture that has to change but do we support knee-jerk reactions where we can just look every time a black kid is killed in the neighborhood and say "Eh, it's okay we're not about that we have to have true justice in america and that's when people and that conversation has to be a two-way conversation i'm sorry i keep i'm going on but Oh, you're wonderful. You're going on, and, and all those points make sense. So many conversations happen around the country related to officer-related shootings and crime and violence, and there are too many, uh, and you're using the term knee-jerk, but I think people try to take sides, and they just don't want to address uh, on the conservative side, they don't want to acknowledge, yes, yeah, sometimes we have a problem, and sometimes we have uh, officers uh, be, engage in bad behavior, and sometimes they must be prosecuted. We want to kind of... Uh, completely reject the concerns about officer conduct and, and the conservative side. But the truth is what you really want, what everyone wants, you should want truth. We you want, want th- truth and justice. Yes. Yes. Truth and justice and the justice system applied equally to everyone and the due process and the tracing it down, getting down to the core of what the facts were matters in every case. And, and notice when James talked about the officers, he talked about officers in general. We have to understand that a lot of shootings that occur from officers to black youth happen from black officers Mm -hmm. to black youth. And if we really want to talk about this, we also have to bear in mind that officer-related shootings are not nearly as prevalent as people might think. The number one cause of homicide in the black community are black young men killing other black young men unless you consider the genocide that occurs in the black womb. So those are issues if life is important, and we do believe not that just black lives are important, all lives are important, those are issues we have to address. Yes, yeah, so, so how can you end up in a situation where black youth are killing black youth at rates that are insurmountable? It's because the Democrat Party currently pushes, and I try to remain, not get too emotional about this, but the Democrat Party currently pushes a message that if by chance you happen to get pregnant, it's okay to go and abort, to kill the baby. What kind, think of, once you push a message like that, no wonder you grow up having no value for life. Because no one has said, wait a second, your life is valuable. Your child's life is valuable. There are resources. There's, there are churches. There are government resources. There are neighbors. There are people that can help you. Your kid can be someone. You can grow up and, and you can be the mother to the next E. Stanley O'Neill, the next Kenneth Chenault, the CEO of American Express, Don Thompson at McDonald's. The, the next President Obama, hopefully with better policies. <laughs> a Republican, <laughs> President Obama, yeah. <laughs> you know, we could talk all evening long. I want to thank you both for doing what you're doing. I love this idea of New Journey Pack. I love the idea of getting the conservative message from uh, into the inner cities where it's not just preach from afar or preach only during election season, but an ongoing discussion in America. As I use say the expression of my show so often, the American political conversation, it needs to happen among people of all backgrounds. So thank you so very much for what you're doing. Thank you, both nerdly, James Golden. You are quite welcome. Thank you for having us. It's been wonderful uh, speaking with you. And we hope to uh, continue this conversation. Oh, I'll invite you again. Thank you so much. And thank you, Archie Pruitt. Thank you so much. I got to tell you, folks, that was the most fun interview. These are gems, these two men, gems of human beings. I want to hit a couple quick points and then uh, turn to the Kobe Bryant story uh, of his unfortunate passing, tragic passing over the weekend. But I want to say about this New Journey Pack. First of all, New Journey Pack. PAC being P-A-C dot org, or as he said, as Bo Snorley said, MAGA dot black. It's a place to go, find out more what they're doing, 
and consider supporting. The reason I'm so excited about this, I've always felt this idea, and I've, I've actually been a consultant for political candidates and tried to encourage them to bring you know, the, the conservative message to everyone, but it is really a, a crime. It is a, a horrible thing that for decades, the Democrat Party has convinced black America to keep on voting Democrat, even though the policies the Democrat Party embrace hurt black families, hurt black communities. It is a tragedy. And so these two gentlemen, so I love several things about what they're doing. I love the PAC. I love their idea of getting into the blue city, inner cities, and staying there, putting together a New Journey PAC headquarters, not just campaign season, not just until we get through the 2020 elections, but an ongoing conversation in the minority communities, in black communities, put together and backed by a New Journey PAC that says we're going to keep talking about what policies work and what policies don't. I love several things about what they're doing. That is the, a big thing, staying on the ground, because many, I will tell you, I've worked on campaigns where I've had people from black majority neighborhoods say to me, Republicans only come down here during election season. Democrats have an office here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We need to be bringing our message on a consistent basis. Number two, I love the idea that Bo Snurley said that the idea that you cannot argue conservatism and fail to be honest about the history of America the history of segregation, and the knowledge that many people, many black American voters, either lived through segregation or they learned about it from their mother or their grandmother, and it feels real. It, it's a present concern in their thoughts. So whether, so as we are communicating the conservative message, be honest, yeah, we had a really bad history in America, you know, slavery and segregation and Jim Crow and Ku Klux Klan. And yes, you can point out that it was a Democrat party in charge at that time, but the Democrat party has managed to dupe many black voters into blaming the history of segregation, Ku Klux Klan on the Republican party but admit the truth of the history. I also love James Golden's point about when there's an officer involved shooting. We've got to be honest enough to say, no one knee jerk react, not on the left, not on the right, not on the black community, not in the white community or the off of the police officer supporting community. Everybody needs to be focused on what is true. Find the facts, discover the truth, and apply the laws, apply due process, apply the laws, the justice system, in every case following the law. This is a huge thing, and I think he's exactly right when he said there are some people who just almost don't even want to talk about it if there was an officer involved shooting uh, that is not, um, you know, that may look bad There are for that seemingly the officer was not justified in, in a shooting, and people who defend law enforcement might want to say, well, I don't know, let's not talk about back off. For, no, we, we need to deal with situations. The last point I'll make, and they, 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 I will say at this event that we sponsor for them over the weekend, they gave a fabulous presentation, but the last point I wanted to make was they really are very collaborative with other black conservative voices. I you know, was trying to encourage some people to donate to them, to New Journey PAC, and the, some of these people are already really big supporters of Candace Owens and her Blexit movement, but they are collaborative, they, and they see their mission as uh, moving along the same you know, parallel tracks, but, but different tracks get, getting to the same goal. So I just encourage you to, to learn about that PAC more, follow what they're doing, and I think they could make an extraordinary difference in America. So it was a great, great thing. And again, maga.black or newjourneypack.org.